Uh, board meeting of the Board of Trustees being held today, June 6. Time is 5.04. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll move on to new business, 3A. Consider approval of charter for the 2017 Facilities Advisory Committee. <coughs> Mr. Escobar. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, President Guerra, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Uh, the board's been provided with a copy of the uh, draft charter for the 2017 Facilities Advisory Committee. Um, also in the packet that you have available to you is a uh, tentative timeline of meetings for this Facilities Advisory Committee. Uh, they would begin next Wednesday, June 14th, and meet, meet weekly <coughs> with the goal of presenting a final report to the board in August. Uh, for comparison purposes, back in 2010 when the district had a, a similar advisory committee, they met seven times over three months. This committee will meet seven times over two months, but still covering the same amount of information, just meeting weekly. Um, also, what you have for information is a copy of the uh, possible appointees or appointees from each of the trustees that have submitted to date, as well as a list of community organizations and leaders that the district will reach out to if the board does uh, choose to pursue this uh, committee. So with that, administration is recommending approval of the charter as provided. Motion to approve. Second. And with that, that motion, just to note that would uh, give staff the ability to move forward uh, with contacting uh, the appointees, uh, both from uh, the individual trustees as well as those listed uh, district community leaders. I have a motion by Mr. Nahara, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any discussion? Mr. Guerra. Mr. Nahara. Mr. Squad, just for confirmation, this uh, the charter didn't change from the previous time did, uh, previous time, correct? Uh, there were minor updates, some things that had to be changed due to the time frame and such that we're working on. So there were a couple lines removed, but in essence, it's the same. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. I mean, the last time it served us very well, so Absolutely. I'm glad to see that uh, we used it as a framework for uh, to continue on this one. Yes, sir. Nothing more. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Squad. Next item, 3B. Consider approval memorandum of understanding with Project Vida Health Center. Ms. Carmen Crosset. Little smaller. President Guerra, Dr. Spinoza, members of the board. I am presenting uh, the consider of approval for an MOU from Project Vida to provide us with a licensed professional counselor at several campuses. Um, and what we've done is we've provided you with a revised copy of that MOU. Uh, Trustee Rodriguez requested that we expand on the MOU that was first introduced to the committee so that we could uh, include protocols and the collaboration. Um, and that was done in this MOU. So yeah would like to review it. <coughs> and if you have questions, Ms. Tammy McCaven, Director of Guidance and Counseling, who's been working with Project Vida, and who will be working directly with the LPC at these campuses, um, is here to answer those questions as well. Do we have any questions? Questions. Mr. Nahara. Hi, Ms. McCaven. <clears throat> so um, one of our challenges, of course, every time one of our students has to um, has a, a physician's office appointment or any appointment for that matter, they essentially have to leave school. So one of the things that we're uh, kind of uh, overcoming with that is the ability for them to receive services that a physician has deemed necessary there at the campus so they don't have to leave. It's They can just go receive the service and then head back to class, correct? Yes, sir. The, the LPC would be housed there on the campus and they would do specific days on specific campuses, so that's exactly right. The referral would happen there on the campus. They'll have a facilitator there to help the parent with Medicaid, CHIP, whatever it might be, and then the student would see the LPC there on campus, and you're exactly right. So they're not missing, they're missing class time to see the therapist, but they're not missing time for driving time and so forth. Right. 
Or as what happens most times is once we pull them out of school, they don't come back. Exactly. <clears throat> um, in, in without, I guess, not too much detail, but how is this different from what our counselors can do? Well, because of, of course, the caseload with the counselors when at the high school campus, 400 to 1, 750 to 1 on the middle schools, 800 to 1 on the elementary campuses, our counselors will see the students three to four times, and then they do refer out anyway if the student needs more assistance because they're not able to provide that in-depth assistance on the campus. So they do refer out to agencies anyway. So this is just a referral out, but it's a referral out, and the LPC is there on the campus. So it's exactly the process we follow anyway. Okay. Is this... Um have we ever entered into agreement with an LPC like this before? Not in the same situation. We did have a grant five years ago called our Project Hope Grant where we had an LCSW, a licensed clinical social worker, that we had um, that individual was part of the grant. And so we did that in the Valley with five of our schools. It was very similar to this where the, where the LCSW was on the campus is seeing the students, helping with Medicaid, so forth and so on, but not an LPC. Okay. And it certainly comforts me, and although, you know, of course, anything that we pursue, I certainly want it to be successful, but I see if, if for whatever reason, you know, we decide that this isn't right for us, we've got a 30-day termination notice, so I'm glad to see that in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. No more questions. Mr. Gonzalez, <coughs> is there going to be any exchange of information between Project Vida and the counselors on whatever these kids share? We... Um, as far as a district, we're not going to be sharing any information with Project Vita unless there's a release of information <coughs> between the district and the parent. But Project Vita will be sharing information with us. Again, we'll have to get a release of information from the parent because their relationship is with Project Vita. So we, as a, as a campus, will get a release of information so that Project Vita can share with us. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Nahra? Uh, Yes, Ms. McCabe, Ms. Corsi, you mentioned that there were changes made based on Ms. Rodriguez's recommendations. Yes, ma'am. In the previous MOU, it wasn't listed uh, exactly how the collaboration would happen and what the um, protocol would be followed. It was just mentioned as a protocol. Uh, this is the protocol, and then it was a collaboration of counselor and LPC, but not outlined. So what we did is we met with uh, Project B then actually outlined the the, that those protocols in that process. Okay, and so this MOU that we've received with our Friday packet is the same as yes, what we're looking at mm -hmm. tonight? It is. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Motion to approve. Second. Second. <coughs> motion by Mr. Nahra, second by Ms. Nahra. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, ladies. Next item, 3C. Consider approval of utilization of purchase cooperative Allied States Region 19. <coughs> Mr. Tom Ironton. Good evening, President Garrett, Dr. Espinosa, and members of the board. This is a, uh, this project uh, encompasses two schools, Socorro Middle and Sanchez Middle. Uh, we would like uh, the board to consider approving a, uh, under the purchasing co-op of Region 19, Jordan Foster, to come in and uh, take all of the the VCT out of Socorro High School in the cord. I mean Sanchez Middle School in the uh, corridors, and we would then come back and stain the concrete at Socorro Middle School. We will be removing all of the carpet and the old VCT that's underneath the carpet and coming back and doing the floors and score of metal in a stained concrete. Similar to what we've done at Montwood Middle, I mean Montwood High School and Chester Jordan. And under this agreement, we will be able to do a portion of that uh, if the board approves tonight, uh, this summer, and then we would finish it as uh, at the different intercessions and time off. At the, uh, at the at at the uh, after the school year starts, but we are hoping to uh, get this started. We've met with both campuses administrators, uh, Dr. Espinosa, myself, and some of my colleagues walked the facility and determined this was one of the areas that needed to be addressed at both of the schools. 
so uh, we are doing this in hopes that we get it completed prior to the moving in the furniture, which those two schools will get new classroom furniture. Uh, administration recommends approval as presented. Any questions? Mr. Nahana? Mr. Ennington, um, why, uh, why are we going this route, the uh, purchasing cooperative, instead of uh, what I'm used to seeing with construction contracts where, you know, we issue the RFP and then, you know, people respond and why are we going this route with this one? This was the, uh, the easiest way uh, to do this and uh, actually the quickest way because of the timeline that we were looking at. Okay, is it more affordable too? Because I know the other way too, we've got um, like some fees and stuff that are added to it. Yes, this, I mean, they have a, uh, through Region 19, and Mr. Garcia can correct me if I'm wrong, they have it all bid out, and, and they use those numbers, you know, when they put together <coughs> these proposals. So it's, it's, it's similar. Yeah. Did, um, <coughs> I don't remember the name of the company. You said Jordan, right? Jordan Foster, yes, sir. Okay, I wasn't sure whether I was just remembering Chester Jordan or it really was Jordan Foster. <laughs> um, did they do the stained concrete work for us at the other sites? This, their sub did them at both of the schools I mentioned, Chester Jordan, which has just turned 10 years, yes, sir. 10 years old last, <clears throat> last week, and we have had little or none uh, maintenance on those floors because it's, uh, you basically damp mop it. And then they also did the work at the Montwood High School when we removed the the, uh, the carpet out of the hallways and put the, the concrete stain in that. Okay. So we've, we've dealt with the sub before. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Arrington, just a question. In regard to core middle school and the drawings and the one for Square High School, you're, you're going to do the hallway first in, in uh, Sanchez, I mean? <coughs> Not Square High School. In Sanchez, you're going to do the hallway first? Yes. In the just, classrooms? Just the front part of, and I, do your, does yours right. have it? Yeah. <coughs> so it's just, just, how about how we show us as well? Those will be done later. These will, okay, these will be yeah, done later. This is what we're going to focus okay. on this summer. And then what I said, the different intercessions and stuff will come back. Perfect. Okay. And the other one, this one we are going to be focusing on this side where the arrow is, this side of the building mm. okay. first, and then we'll come back and do. We'll do more if we can. Right, I got it. Yeah. We'll Thank do you, more if we can, but uh, since it's one subcontractor doing the work, he felt like this is as much as he could do under this particular time frame. Okay. Ms. Nahda? Mr. Ankton, does this cost and cover the whole school? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. And yes. So we can just come back and do it later. That is correct. When time permits. Okay. Yes. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Nahas. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Arrington. Item 3D. Consider approval of new job descriptions. Mr. Campoya. Good evening, President Guerra, Dr. Spinoza, and members of the board. On February 22nd, approximately February 22nd or back then, uh, Cabinet entertained presentations by department directors or supervisors on requests for new positions for the 2017-18 school year. Out of all the requests that Cabinet um, reviewed, 93 were approved for the new school year and to be included in the budget. Now, out of those 93, they, there were four that uh, require a new job description and that is the reason why I'm here tonight to obtain approval of the job descriptions. On separate cover, you should have received those job descriptions. One is for coordinator of payroll, one is for employee relations specialist, one is for special systems fire sprinkler and suppression technician, and the last one is for Title III instructional LPAC aid bilingual. The agenda says PAC. There is an L missing, so it should be LPAC aid <coughs> bilingual. By policy, um, board, it, it is required that the board approve the new job descriptions. And at this time, I did invite the directors or uh, supervisors that oversee these positions in case the board has any questions. 
And at this time, administration is recommending approval of the job descriptions as presented. Any questions? Are we taking them all four at the same time? Sure. Commissioner Hahn. The job description. So we are taking them all four at the same time? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Campoya, the, um, so every single one of these jobs de descriptions is, is uh, additive. It's not an update. It's not um, a, um, a changing of an existing position to something new and different. It, they're additive. Each that one, is correct. Right? They're new positions. <clears throat> the uh, number four, the title. I'm sorry, Mr. Nahara. You know, we're going to have to do one each individually. Okay. Because they're, uh, I would just think so, because they're, um, they're numbered individually, so I would go individually. So we could, you have a question with the coordinator payroll? No? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Nahara, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion approved. <coughs> Item D2, employee relations specialist. Any questions? Um, no, sir. Motion to approve. Second. Motion approved by Mr. Nahara, second by Ms. Nahara. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Item D3, Special Assistant Fire Sprinkler <laughs> Suppression Technician. Any questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Nahara? Mr. Campoya, we've had fire sprinkler systems for, for a long time. Um, we're just barely adding this position? I believe it is a different position, but I do have Mr. Carrasco here that can <clears throat> give you a little more insight on the reason for this position. President Guerra, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Yes, sir, Mr. Nahara. Um, so if, I'm just surprised to see uh, the fire sprinkler and suppression technician. We've had fire systems in our schools for quite some time yes, now, but, but we're adding this position? Yes, prior we've had uh, technicians that are focused mostly on the alarm system. Mm -hmm. This one is more specified with anything suppression of a fire. Sprinklers, hydrants, uh, fire extinguishers. Uh, working in coordination <laughs> so when we have any kind of upgrades or any kind of repairs, this technician will help us as far as working with uh, any type of uh, vendor to make sure as far as in the best interest of the district that we're meeting all uh, state standards through the, through the fire marshal and, and state, state codes, fire codes. Would they also oversee, I guess, the system like in our computer rooms that are not water-based or something? Um, anything as far any in any areas, it would help us as far as that as well. It, it would help us. Okay. One more questions. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Nagra, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Item D4, Title Three Instructional PAC 8 Bilingual. LPAC 8 Bilingual. <clears throat> any questions? Of course. Mr. Nagra? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Campoya, um, I noticed on this particular position, uh, on page one, um, the uh, qualifications, education certification, um, and Nick will be highly qualified, 48 college credit hours, and then teacher certification is preferred. Is that because it's an aid? Um, so it would be similar to other aids. This is not like the primary person working in the role, or? or no, the, the, this is my understanding of the position is we currently have temporary instructional aids doing this type of work. So we're going to end up having a full-time uh, instructional aid performing the work for bilingual. And that came out as far as the results of the audit that was done for the bilingual department. That was a recommendation. Now, the qualifications, uh, Ms. Stiles worked with the director to come up with what is required for that particular job. Um, but again, those are just what the director recommended. Yeah, so, I mean, why wouldn't we... I guess my question is, and I'm not sure that, that, that Mr. Campoya, you have the answer, is why not require the degree? I mean, they're... The, well, from HR's perspective, uh, for positions of this great level, we normally don't require a degree. It's a paraprofessional position. It's a 304. So the, the, if we require a degree, we're afraid that we're going to limit the applicants for this type of position. So since it's such a low-paying job for somebody with a degree, that is one reason why we don't recommend it, but we, we can if the director is recommending that. So you're confident that with the qualifications and the skills and knowledge that we have, then the, the, the person will be
be able to deliver within the role as you've as it's been defined? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, if I may, Ms. Uh, Mr. Nahid, I asked a similar question <coughs> during our HR committee when we reviewed these, and and they are uh, college graduates with their teacher certificate who haven't gotten a permanent job yet. There are some retired teachers who will come back to fill a position or substitutes even, basically getting their foot in the door. Yeah. And so. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Nahara, second by Ms. Nahara. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Campoya. Next item, uh, number four, executive session. <clears throat> the meeting is to be closed for consideration of employment and contract status for the 2017-18 school year for two assistant principals, to consider returning term certified contract to probationary contract status, and to consider administrative recommendations for principals at Captain Walter Clark Middle School, and Chester Jordan Elementary School and Chief of Police under Texas Government Code Sections 551.071 and 551.074. The time is 525. Board is back from executive session. The time is 6.37. We'll move on to number five, new business, 5A. Discussion, discussion and possible action regarding employment contract status for 2017-18 school year for assistant principals NA at Desert School and YR at Manuel Puentes Middle School. Mr. Campoya. Yes, President Guerra, Dr. Spinoza, board members. I do want to make a correction though to the way the agenda is, is written. The YR at Manuel Puentes should read YR at Montwood High School. Administration recommends the board approve the issuance of the 2017-18 certified term contract, teaching contract for employee NA at Desert Wind and YR at Montwood High School for the reasons discussed in closed session. Motion to approve. Second. Sec Motion by Mr. Nahara, second by Ms. Nahara. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Campoya. Item 5B, discussion and possible action regarding change of term certified contract of teacher MG to probationary certified contract. Mr. Campoya. Yes, President Guerra, Dr. Smiles, and board members. Administration recommends the board approve the issuance of the 2017-18 certified probationary teaching contract for employee MG for reasons discussed in closed session. So move. Motion by Mr. Nahara, second by Ms. Rodriguez. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Capoya. Item 5C, consider approval of administrative recommendation. Principal for Cap, uh, Captain Walter E. Clark Middle School, Dr. Spinoza. Yes, President Guerra and members of the board, at this time, administration recommends Mr. Ivan Ramirez to assume, all, to assume all the roles and responsibilities for the principal at Walter Clark Middle School. Motion Mo to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Nahara, second by Ms. Nahara. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Congratulations, <coughs> Mr. Ramirez. Item C, B, Chester E. Jordan Elementary School. Yes, President Guerra, members of the board, at this time, administration recommends Ms. Maribel Pidon to assume all the roles and the responsibilities as the principal at Cheshire Jordan Elementary. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Naha, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? <coughs> Motion passes. Congratulations, Ms. Pedone. Next item, Chief of Police, Dr. Spinoza. Yes, President Guerra, members of the board, at this time, administration recommends Mr. Jose Castorena to assume all the roles and the responsibilities as Chief of Police. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ms. Nagara, second by Ms. Mr. Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations, Mr. Castorena. Chief this Castorena. Chief Castorena, now. thank you very much. This ends our regular board workshop, I mean, special board meeting. Now we'll move on to the board workshop, item six. 
Yeah. Well, you're right. It. Will we continue it? No, it's just part of it. It's part of it. Yes. Part of it. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Ressa. Yes, sir. President Guerra, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Thank you. Today we continue the budget process. This will be the last time we actually go over the details of the budget prior to the actual adoption. What I'm presenting to you right now is certainly the agenda that we'll be kind of going over. <coughs> kind of go we'll give you an update on the state legislature, uh, provide some revenue assumptions for you, final revenue assumptions that we're going to use to adopt the revenues that, uh, uh, that are listed. We'll go over some debt service uh, parameters that are changing. We'll talk about our revenue estimates, our budgets. Uh, the general fund, the child nutrition fund, as well as the debt service. We'll go over our general fund uh, supplies for the district. That's something that we've always provided the board uh, on a yearly basis, as well as the three-year financial outlook, and then certainly the, the, we'll discuss the June 20th public hearing. So with respect to the update on the legislature, as you heard, um, with respect to House Bill 21, the Senate added a voucher uh, amendment to House Bill 21 for the uh, for, for educational savings account, pretty much that wasn't accepted by the by the House, and so therefore it pretty much killed the bill. In addition to that, the the, the Senate had re, kind of uh, decreased the amount of funding for public education from 1.9 million dollars to 530 million dollars. So, in a sense, uh, it would have been a lot less money that we would have gotten if the the Senate bill uh, had been approved. So today, Governor Abbott has announced a special se session to, to start on July the 18th. Primarily, the one thing they're going to discuss at the beginning is certainly the uh, sunset uh, bill uh, legislation. Uh, that's going to be adopted first. And once that's adopted, then he'll go and address 19 other items, uh, which may or may not include certainly uh, property tax reform, school choice for certain special education needs, as well as creating the Texas Commission on School Finance Reform. So we'll see what that holds. I don't hold any kind of hope that there'll be any changes with respect to school finance at this time. But who knows, I could be wrong. So with respect to our revenue assumptions for the general fund, these are things that I'm gonna repeat on the public hearing, so I'll beg for your forgiveness and, and forbearance, so to speak. But we're looking at a property valuation increase of 4.1%. So we're looking at our estimated taxable values to end up being $8.9 billion. Uh, we're looking at an increase in our average daily attendance of 1.46% to 43665 We're also looking at the Comptroller's Property Tax Division assigning a value of $8.9 billion. And there, our tax collection rate will be 99%. There will be no, we're not proposing any increase in the total tax rate for 2017-18. I uh, just want to let you know about our changing debt service parameters. Our debt service parameters are, are, are our debt service is actually decreasing by six hundred thousand uh, dollars this year and in future years, as well as the fact that our interest earnings are increasing our, our debt service revenues. So, with property values also projected to increase, we have an opportunity to maybe move over a little bit of the pennies that we assign for debt service to the general fund and generate some additional revenue. So, what we're talking about here is that. With respect to this is our total tax rate right now, we have the possibility we're going to propose just taking a little bit of the debt service and moving over to the maintenance and operations, but we'll still have the debt, the same total tax rate for the taxpayer, but we'll generate about $1.9 million in additional revenue for the uh, general fund. And in so doing, it'll still be the, the same tax rate as uh, the prior year, and it will be well below the rollback rate of $1.32, dollar so this is our revenue estimates for next year with respect to the general fund. We're looking at a total of $363.8 million. Uh, it's an increase of $16.3 million. Again, increased values, increase uh, average daily attendance, uh, increase in the tier two yield under state funding, provided the additional revenue. Uh, we're still looking at a, at a budget uh, deficit of about $10.5 million. But again, it's important to keep in mind, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? Historically, uh, we've been able to make up some of these deficits through lap salaries, uh, through just looking closely at our expenses, through having higher average daily attendance than what we project. So just want to put that point that in mind. With respect to our child nutrition, we're looking at our revenues of $27.2 million. That's an increase of $1.1 million. It's still a budget deficit that we're projecting of $1.8 million. But again, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Historically, the, the child nutrition program has done a very good job of being able to budget conservatively, but also end up on, on surpluses. Now, whenever we've had deficits for child nutrition, these are planned deficits. And the reason we've had to do it is because our fund balance is higher than the mandatory three months of operating expenses. And in other words, we have to draw it down because if not, 
the federal gov the, the feds might come back and say, uh, you need to, we, we want some of that money back. So we draw it down in the sense that we're remodeling some of our kitchens, uh, doing some upgrades with respect to our, our computer systems there at the campuses, in the cafeterias, and so it's something to keep that in mind for the future. Mr. Guerra. Uh, Mr. Ressa, we have a question for Mr. Nahara. Mr. Ressa, yes, um, if memory serves me well, uh, it's those same federal regulations that also mandate that we establish our um, meal prices at a certain level. Um, and I know last year there's, there's two things. There's a formula that is used um, to arrive at what our price should be, um, uh, but there's also a limit on what the actual increase um, we set. And um, I think the last time that we increased our prices, um, we raised it according to the guidelines to the limit that we were supposed to, but we're still not at the level that we should be according to the result of the formula. So does, do the revenues here include that increase or is that not factored yet? It's my understanding that uh, those revenues um, are not yet factored in, uh, but I'll okay. have to double check with that. Okay. But it um, wouldn't, but, but honestly, <coughs> Mr. Nahida, those, those revenues are not gonna be, in my understanding, that major of an impact, so to speak. I mean, it, we're, it's gonna be, my understanding, if we do, it's gonna be a minimum, maybe a 10 cent increase across the board. Right, so. right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> With respect to debt service, as you can see, the, the revenue estimates, we, we're estimating uh, $44.8 million in revenues. That's projecting a little bit of a decrease in the tax rate, but we have increases with respect to our local sources in the sense of a higher values, higher uh, in, uh, rates uh, with respect to our interest in our investments, so to speak. So we're looking at minimal uh, fund balance use, but I don't perceive us using that at all. I think we're gonna uh, actually have high, higher revenues than what we're projecting. With respect to our budget, since the last time you've seen it, we've certainly just adjusted our our, uh, our payroll amounts to reflect a 3% general pay increase, and also we've adjusted our revenue estimates. So I just want to tell you, this is the last thing that you've, these are the changes we've made since the last time we've been here. So what's in our budget? Again, you've seen this before. So we have a general pay increase for our employees of 3% across the board. We're also in additional instructional positions uh, to meet our anticipated growth. We are projecting to grow about one5 percent. This year we grew over 700 uh, students. We're projecting about the same amount for next year. Also additional instructional uh, positions for the career technology education uh, area, high school end of course classes, as well as the early college high school. Um, we're also looking at an increase in uh, the district's share contribution for our employees in the health care plan, in our health care fund. We're also looking at an increase of about $600,000 for the expansion of the WIND program and additional operational positions because of growth. We're looking at positions certainly in maintenance operations, transportation, police services, and other areas. We'll also have a startup salaries for the new elementary school that will start up in 18-19. Uh, increase of $800,000 for utilities because of the ongoing Rate 41 lawsuit, as well as additional funding for E-Rate. We're gonna build, up, build out our WAN, pro, uh, WAN uh, network. We're going from, I believe, two gigs to about 10 gigs in the pipe. And also some additional funding to replace for replacement uh, of uh, classroom furniture. Uh, again, these are things that I'm going to go over when we have the public hearing on the 20th. So when you look at our Mr. budget Gera. for the general fund. Mr. Ressa, I'm sorry. Mr. Nahara. I'm yes, sorry, sir. Mr. Ressa, just one more question. Yes, sir. Um, the uh, Rate 41 lawsuit, do you remember what the impact was the last time the electric company raised the rates on us? You know what? I believe it was 10% uh, across the board. I thought it was going to be about... Seven or eight hundred thousand dollars in an increase. And in, how long ago rate. was that? It was last year, and then they came back right again. So they came back the following year to to contest the agreement that was made. So, so if this moves forward, about one point six million dollars in the span of two years. Yes, sir. If their request for the change in the rate comes to fruition. Okay. So right now we're budgeting about $25,000 in legal fees with part of that consortium with other school districts that are fighting this particular rate. And that's what we're budgeting, budgeting for our share of this fee. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Guerra. Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, yes, Mr. Reza. <clears throat> One of the uh, bullets <coughs> here is that uh, uh, property values are projected to increase by about 4%. What is 
last year's? It's, it's about the same. Last year's was a little less than that. It was about 3.93% is what we ended up increasing. So it's a very modest, slight increase from last year, but we're growing at a very steady rate. Thank you. You're welcome. So with respect to our general fund budget, you're looking at a budget uh, of $374.4 million, so an increase of about $11 million, primarily in instruction. You'll see that the, the major increases there is in the instructional uh, category. So we're looking at a, a budget increase of, over our revised budget of about 3.04%. So again, we've, we've discussed some of these changes, but if you ever want to have any questions, or we can ask at the public hearing, or you can call me. We can kind of go over these. So again, primarily additional teaching positions, instructional positions, as well as increasing our health care contribution for teachers. Um, certainly with respect to school leadership, um, uh, we're adding some, some additional amounts there. Uh, transportation, we're looking at certainly additional positions because of the routes. We did the read boundaries, uh, and so that added additional routes. We added additional mechanics as well as additional uh, monitors and transportation drivers. Uh, with respect to uh, maintenance and operations, additional uh, positions as well as we're adding some additional funding because we need to add for maintenance. We've had more schools, we've added more schools, and we really haven't done anything to their basic budget. And it was important for us to make sure that we put in some more money into maintenance so that our cup upkeep is there, mm -hmm. as opposed to using maybe committed funds when we have savings. Okay. Uh, certainly, um, facilities acquisitions, these are some, some, some additional money that we put in, primarily at Socorro High School. We have the HVAC pro project that's going on there. Uh, and so, again, these are just uh, some of the amounts and the changes. This is the format in how the board is going to adopt the budget. You will adopt it by fund, so the general fund, the food service, debt service, and by function. So we're looking at a total budget that's, we're going to ask that you adopt a $448,484,761, okay? So that's how it's going to be adopted, and we'll ask you to adopt it uh, in on June the 20th. So these are instructional expenses. Uh, historically, we've provided you this information, as you can see, um, it's increased, uh, we're budgeting an increase there for 2018. Primarily, it's payroll or fringes or uh, health care contributions, okay? So 85% of our budget is payroll, health care, fringes. And it's important for us to keep in mind that we're in the people business to educate. And that, so it doesn't give you much latitude with respect to the other areas of the budget, so to speak. And again, uh, general fund supplies, this is something that was requested. I think by Mr. Ayub, so we kind of provide that for him every year. So, and then finally, this is our three-year projection outlook. Uh, we are projecting about a $7 million drawdown. Again, this is a projected drawdown. Um, what we're looking at is that we're projecting our ending fund balance at $94.5 million. However, historically, I've been pretty conservative with whenever I do estimates. Um, I don't think I'm going to be that far off this year. But it's important to keep in mind is that, that we're drawing it down, we're growing. Um, we're using some of our reserves to kind of make sure that we spur investment. We don't. We have capacity with the tax rate. We know that, but that's the last thing we want to touch. When people want to move to a school district, they look at two things. They look at the schools, and ours are the best in the state. They look at the tax rate, and we feel strongly that if you don't do anything with the strong uh, with, with the tax rate, it spurs investments. People will move and buy homes. We get more money from the state than we get from property taxes. So it's important for us to work on certainly generating enrollment growth, so to speak. Now, this is uh, what we're projecting for next year, $10.5 million deficit. It's important to keep in mind, this is, a this is the beginning. This is, this is assuming that we spend 100% of our budget, we meet our revenue estimates, and we spend 100% of our budget, right? Those are assumptions that I'm making. Historically, we have lapsed salaries, we have savings, sometimes our revenue comes in higher, so it's all predicated on that. And then, so, just keep that in mind. I'm projecting that the, the, the ending fund balance will kind of stay the same only because right now we have a lot of encumbrances because some of those encumbrances belong to the committed funds ba fund balances. Some of those, when they get paid, will get charged to the committed fund fund balance of the total fund balance area. So um, one of these days I have to just show you how that works, so to speak. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we end up. But I do think that we have strong reserves. I mean, um, I had a rating agency call uh, this past week. They're not going to change their ratings. They realize that we're growing. Uh, they know that we're drawing down our fund balance for specific reasons. And so 
I don't think uh, it's going to have a negative impact with respect to the district. So to speak. And then certainly, this is what's going to be published uh, on Thursday. Now, you have a copy of what's the actual form that's going to be uh, published in the El Paso Times on Thursday, as well as the West Texas Courier. Now, these are preliminary numbers. So, but we have to publish them. They're, they're provided by the Central Appraisal District. So there's been appreciation in values. So you'll see that the average tax uh, home in, in Socorro ISD has gone up from 102,911 to 105,22. When we publish this in August and actually adopt the tax rate, usually these values go a little bit lower because they're still preliminary. But right now, this is what we're publishing. And what we're saying is that we're not changing the total tax rate. It's going to still the same. But because of this increase in values, we're looking at a, a total tax levy increase of $26.91, okay? But it's well below the, the rollback rate that we're projecting of $1.32.43.54, okay? So again, this is all really just a function of property, wealth, uh, property values increasing, so to speak. And then finally, what we, as, as I mentioned, in the El Paso Times on Thursday, uh, as well as the West Texas Courier, we will publish the fact that we're going to have a public hearing on the 20th here in the boardroom at 6 p.m. to discuss the proposed budget as well as the proposed tax rate. So we'll conduct the, the budget. After that, we'll have the public hearing. We'll ask for public input. And then from there, we'll ask the board to adopt the budget as presented. In August, we'll go ahead, and actually in early August, we'll publish the proposed tax rate. We'll do the same thing, but we'll have certified values. So those values will probably reflect a little bit of a decrease. I would project that the actual total tax impact would be lower than the $26 that we're listing here, and, and we'll go from there. So bottom line is that uh, you have the budget booklet. Feel free to call me if you have any questions. Um, it's the same one that we've seen the last couple of weeks. I want to thank you for your forbearance in the presentation, and um, feel free to call me or Mrs. Olson if you have any questions on the budget numbers. Anyone have any questions? Mr. Ms. Rodriguez? <coughs> Mr. Reza, again, uh -huh. um, thank you very much for making everything so clear. Thank you to you and your staff. Thank you very for, much, ma'am. For continuing to update us on the information and all that. Um, again, you, you provide us um, a lot of very, very valuable information to, to help us make our decisions moving forward. Thank you to you and your department. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I want to thank Mrs. Olson for her and her staff for, for working hard on, on this document. We well. know it's all her, but we have to do the politically <laughs> correct thing, and thank you. Uh, well, thank you. She for, paid me to say that. Yeah, really? <laughs> thank you, Ms. Olson. Thank you again for all your hard work. Thank, thank you. you. Any other questions? Mr. Mr. Naha. Mr. Ressa, um, I saw an article earlier today, or at least a headline, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Uh, I, I couldn't find it right now. but. Um, again, Secretary um, DeVoe said something about uh, the cuts being necessary and deep. Does our budget allow for the cuts that they're proposing? You know, we, we're, we're looking at if that those cuts take place, and I haven't read that article, Mr. Dahira. Yeah, neither did I. Mm, uh, my understanding, my belief is that that's not going to impact this next year, but the year after that. That's something that we have to look closely. But, but look, we have Title I, we have Title III, we have Idea B. Those are things that we might have to consider. Another thing we have to consider is that part of the, the what the governor stated about calling back the legislature to discuss uh, what they call school finance reform, some of the decisions, some of the recommendations that were made by the Senate reflected certain changes that impacted tax effort. And that formula pretty much rewarded tax effort. We've been very judicious because of Dr. Spinoza's your direction about keeping our MO tax rate below a dollar. I mean, that's phenomenal. But there's a possibility if that con continues that we might be penalized for that. So two things. Yes, sir. I think it's something, it's, a, it's an area of concern that we're going to have to look at as we go through next year, number one. And number two, I think we have to look at the fact that, you know, we're getting penalized because we've been very judicious on the tax rate because they might be rewarding tax effort. And, and, I, and, I, and that's not exactly a fair thing, but I'm not going to go ahead. So no good deed goes unpunished, right? First, yeah. they expect, <laughs> expect us to be uh, frugal and, you know, manage our budgets uh, yeah. wisely. And, um, you know, then they turn around and penalize because we've been successful at doing so. Uh, yes, sir. That's exactly right. When you look at some of the, or you listen to some of the committee meetings and some of those hearings, 
they're always asking oh, which districts are at, uh, are at a dollar four, which ones are at a dollar, and, and if you're below a dollar, well, why are they asking for more money from the state when they can raise the tax rate? And that's, that's not right. I mean, as I mentioned before, the state's share has gone from 48%, well, maybe go down to 38% under the auspices of, well, you know, um, you know we're, we're, it's, it's a shared responsibility. Well, it's not shared, in my estimation, when it, they're paying 38%. So the taxpayer of that particular school district, whether it be property wealthy or property poor, is carrying the burden of, of financing public education. Hey, Demi, do you have you know, you don't so. Exactly what I just told her. No, no, no. no more questions. Thank you, Mr. Dessa. questions. You're welcome. No more other questions? Do we have no other questions uh, for the special board meeting and the budget workshop? This means adjourn. The time is 7 to 1. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you. That's exactly what those words I just told her.